Hello everybody, I hope you're all doing great today and I hope you enjoyed these stories. Make sure you check out my Patreon for early access to my videos and my podcast in the description below. I have a quick message before the story starts as always, so if you want to go straight to the stories then I have timestamps in the description below. But today I'd like to share this. So remember, if you're struggling with your mental health and you're feeling down about it, it's okay and it's normal. Just make sure you go out and get therapy for it, and don't worry if the first therapist you find isn't right for you, and the first therapy techniques aren't correct. It's a process and it's a part of it, and it's not going to be perfect the first time, but trust me, there's a right one out there for you, and it can make a massive difference when you find them. And remember, with getting better, it's a process, and there's always going to be ups and downs, so don't worry about this too. There's always going to be bad days you have, but try not to view it as a failure. Just view it as a part of the process of getting stronger, and that it takes some time. But everything can turn around, and it will for you. I promise you that. And I believe in you, and you're not alone in the struggles. And remember to make sure you have some goals and things to work on. For me, that makes a really big difference with everything, and I have to usually have things I'm working on. Well, actually, pretty much always, so... It's just a fault. So I hope that helps people and I hope you enjoyed these stories. Take care, I'll speak to you all soon. Now I worked as a fire lookout and one of the most scary things that happened to me was while I was actually away from work for a day. I had a family emergency and couldn't actually be at this post that day. Now when I returned, the whole fire tower was actually on its side and had collapsed. Apparently there was a design flaw that nobody knew about, and luckily the person covering the tower that day had actually stepped out on a patrol and wasn't present. But, it's safe to say whoever would have been in it would 100% have died if they were there at the time of it collapsing. I work as a park ranger, so I got pretty used to hearing the sounds of the forest on my own at times. Now there was one particular time that I kept on hearing somebody's name being called out, but I couldn't figure out exactly where it was coming from. I thought this was bizarre because usually you can at least triangulate where something is, but this time I had no clue. I then realised it was calling out my name constantly, and it kind of worried me a bit. I then headed over and finally found out where the source of the sound was coming from. And just on the ground, I can see a walkie-talkie that's been smashed up. I pick it up and inspect it, thinking maybe this is the source of the sound, but I still can't figure out exactly where it's coming from. I look off, and to the side up in a tree is a Bluetooth speaker constantly repeating out my name on a loop. It's needless to say I noped out of there, and quickly radioed in what happened and we got the police involved. They eventually get the speaker down, we do a thorough search of the area and can't find anyone. And that's what haunts me. We still have no idea who did it to this day, and whoever put it up there did a good job because there was no fingerprints whatsoever. I ended up leaving that job soon after, and I'm still a ranger just in a complete different area. I'm a fire lookout and I have a story I'd like to share with you all from a good few years ago. One day while I was on the job, I headed down to go and get some more water, and I ran into another hiker. He seemed a bit dazed and confused to see people, looking like he'd been out in the forest for a long time. I said hey and he said hey, asking if I knew directions to a certain part of the area we're in. I said yeah and guided him over there. He said, oh, but thanks, and quickly scurried off. I didn't think much of it, thinking it was just a normal hiker out there. Well, about three years later, I was watching the news when I saw his face flash on the screen. He had just been captured for evading the police for a good few months in the area that I was working in, living out in the forest. He had been known to kill multiple people, and I ran into him that day. So I was working as a prospector assistant in central Manitoba one summer. 
We were doing a helicopter assisted magnetic anomaly investigation. Really the best summer ever. There's nothing like the ringing in your ears dissipating after the helicopter has dropped you off and the slow increase in a volume of bugs taking its place. You for sure know that you're in the middle of nowhere. It was the last day of our campaign. There was a little piece of property close to the edge of the road that we didn't need a helicopter for. It was a low priority target that we saved until the end. Now we really did so well during that that we're happy to have an easy in and out of the bush. Around 9am, we heard yelling in one bush. Odd. Nothing should be there. We kept on grabbing samples and it's in the back of our mind. Around 11am we hear it again, this time closer. We call back yet it's silent. Now though, during our travels of this 30km piece of property, we come across many pieces of animal evidence, deer, moose, rabbit droppings everywhere. A few other things here and there, even bear tracks and feces, but nothing prepares us for what's next. Around noon, we're in an old blast hole from the 80s. Prospector Dave told me he used to have a blasting license and blow stuff up in the middle of the forest while drinking beer as one of his favourite pastimes. Now that's until they changed the laws after a couple mini forest fires. Now we're facing due west with our GPS on some rocks getting the most precise UMT it could. We then hear an earth shattering, bone chilling howl. I look at Dave and he turns white. I picked up the GPS and put it in my belt and unclipped the bear spray for safety. Then, at our 9 o'clock facing due west, another wolf. Then, at our 10 o'clock, another. And another, all the way towards the 4 o'clock position. They've calmly said, we need to leave, but you can't run, or you die. We left most of our sampling stuff there. We also carried these modified steel sledgehammers for breaking up rocks and stuff. Most useful thing ever, really. It sat the ready along with the bear spray as we walk. Now it was the longest walk of my life and we didn't say a word. I didn't hear anything, but I'm positive they followed us back to the road and into the truck almost. We drove back to the next town and then drank thoroughly. I worked as a tree planter in northern Ontario, living in tents in very remote parts of the forest, like hours away from civilization, which was only accessible by logging roads. The strangest thing, however, was from a fellow planter who found a backpack in the middle of his area with shoes, clothes, a wallet, school ID and camera. How it ended up getting there is a total mystery to us. The scariest for myself was waking up to see that my tent had collapsed and finding a large bear paw rip apparently happening while I slept, as well as turning a corner to see a large wolf about 10 feet away and returning to a spot I'd been about 5 minutes earlier to find fresh mama bear and cub prints, realising a bear family had basically surrounded me then turned away while I was sleeping. I was hiking in a national forest with my wife and my dog. The first couple of miles of the trail led to a waterfall and swimming hole. It was fairly well populated with people. We decided to hike past the waterfall which involved a bit of a climb. Enough at least to keep most people from going past the waterfall, we hike another mile or two without seeing somebody. The whole time my dog was having a great time happy to be in the woods and happy to walk for 30 minutes if we let her. Suddenly, in a particularly dense part of the trail, she stopped and refused to go ahead. She absolutely would not let us move another inch forward. We stopped and listened and couldn't hear or see anything. The dog though started whining and trying to pull all of us to go backwards towards the swimming hole. I never saw her like that before or since and I was certain she was legitimately afraid. Maybe there was a bear on the trail or coyote or serial killer hiding in the woods. I'll never know because we listened to our dog and decided to get out of there as quick as possible and maybe avoided some kind of gruesome death out there.
This story happened to me several days ago, and it's mostly fresh in my mind so I'd like to share it. I live in Southern Oregon. My county is huge and sparsely populated. It's mountainous to the north, desert to the south and east. My buddy Donnie lived about half an hour from town, about 10 minutes from a resort on a lake in a heavily forested area. On this evening, I had driven out to hang out with Donny, my friend. We had plans to take my Land Cruiser down some dirt roads. He said he knew of a forest service road off the highway that went up to the mountains and ended at a fire watchtower. It's fairly late in the afternoon when we took off, and the sun was already behind the mountains, so the lights fade in now. We left Donny's house and hit the highway. After a short drive, we turned around onto the forest service road and started to head uphill. After a few miles, we were forced to stop abruptly due to a cat front end loader sitting parked across the road. The equipment had been purposely parked in order to block the road. It was perpendicular to the road. The logs had been dragged onto the road to block off the shoulders. My friend Donnie said to me, This wasn't here the other day, let's try another way round. We get out of the cruiser and the woods were nearly dark and silent, except for the wind in the pine trees. There was no easy way around the loader, nothing that wouldn't involve beating up the land cruiser. We decided that we're gonna head back down the road and find a different road up the mountain. After a short trip down the gravel road, we found a promising trowel that would put us around the loader, up the mountain once more. So we take the trowel, and, after a short drive uphill, we saw the loader through the trees. Feeling satisfied, we continued on our way to the fire towers. Now we hadn't gone far, however, we noticed another odd thing, a shipping container which is really sitting just off the road to the woods, back in the trees. That definitely wasn't here, Donnie says, stating it certainly wasn't there the other day too. At this point, I started to feel uneasy. The woods were unnaturally still, even for evening. The weather had been nice, birds and small animals should still be moving around, right? Well, we decided to investigate the shipping container. I drove the cruiser through the brush and up to the container. It was like a dark color almost tanned but with no markings. The doors were actually padlocked shut, and we sat there uneasy, on edge for several minutes. The woods are growing darker, and we finally made the decision to leave. I turned the crews back to the road and start heading downhill. Oh dude, there's some guys in the brush, Donnie yelled. Now this makes me back out of my thoughts. Sure enough, out of nowhere seemingly, three guys were uphill and they're coming towards us on the road. I quickly yanked the wheel and pulled the cruiser onto a side road, heart pounding. Who are they? What are they doing? I yelled. I felt my stomach drop when I realized that the road is on a loop and was bringing us right back to where we had just been. As the truck shot out of the side trail back onto the main gravel road, I realized that one of the guys was less than 10 feet from the cruiser. These guys know the woods, and the guys also knew that the trail would bring me back to them. Hang on, I yell as I yank it into reverse. I managed to just dodge the man in the road with his companions running too. I pushed the Land Cruiser for all I could get from its engine. Now the engine's actually a bit old and I'm a bit worried about it. We're very careful while driving because the trees are literally whizzing past us and we go back towards a paved road. We finally hit the highway and decide not to drive towards Donnie's house. Instead, we took the highway back towards town. Where did they come from, Donnie said. Thinking back, I've actually not seen any other trucks or anything in that area like this just parked up and suddenly appearing. And they just appeared, running out of the brush. Now by this particular moment, we've actually gone several miles when I noticed lights coming up behind us on the highway. They were still quite far back, but coming up fast enough that they would catch up in a minute or so, I accelerated, determined not to be caught. We rounded a slight bend and I slammed on the brakes and drove the truck into the woods once again and turned off the lights. 
Moments later, a truck went flying down the highway past where we're hiding. We waited a few moments longer and then drove onto the highway heading back to Donnie's house by taking many many back roads. We didn't get followed now and we didn't see anything out of the ordinary when we drove past the same spot on the highway where we originally turned. Now I'm really not sure what those guys were doing out there or why they chased us. Two things are for sure though, they didn't want us there and they weren't planning on letting us go back there in the future. Now I live in a beach community with a maritime forest nearby and while hiking about 40 years ago found a massive sea turtle hanging from a tree. I bet the shell was for free to cross. I figured somebody was hoping to recover the shell after the poor thing had deceased but I have no idea how it got up there. Now, working in a rainforest in Southeast Asia many years ago, one of the things we did was trap moths at night. You sit in front of a big white sheet with a lamp in front of it powered by a generator and then periodically go and see what insects had actually been attracted to the sheet. Incidentally, the insects have attracted frogs which then attracted snakes and whatnot. Due to the noise at night, the trap was about a mile away from camp so you'd be there at 3am, all alone in the middle of the jungle. One cloudy night, after there wasn't much happening, on the 1am to 3am shift, I heard rustling besides me. And that wasn't unusual, but it was a bit bigger than I was used to hearing. The rustling got closer and I started to get tense. It got closer still, and I was thinking that I'm going to get eaten by a tiger. Suddenly, a disembodied face broke out of the tree line screaming in an unintelligible language. I have a heart attack, scream a little, and the disembodied face disappeared black into the woods while simultaneously issuing high-pitched giggles. It was only after my heart slowed down that I realised that it's probably someone trying to scare me but I'm still not sure. Now I didn't see but heard, so my husband and I were hiking in a state park on the east coast. It was midday during the week, so we maybe encountered two other people the three hours were out and about. The only sounds we heard are from ourselves, our dog and some animals and birds. When all of a sudden, I started hearing mild chanting. I tell my husband if he heard it too and he nods and tells me be quiet. My dog's ears were at full alert and the hair on the back of my neck was standing up. We continued walking and the noise turned into full-blown monk chanting. Think Halo Georgian chant. It was as clear as day, like standing next to a speaker. To make myself feel better, I convinced myself it was some teens hiding down playing it on their phones. And after five minutes of hearing it, it disappeared. And we barely spoke a word for the last three miles back. While working as a park ranger, there was one thing that a couple of us could never explain. Every so often, we would hear a strange calling out in the forest. Not like a normal sound, more like a chanting sound, but animalistic if that makes sense. One day there was a couple of us going out on a patrol when we hear this sound again. My friend laughs and says, ha, huh, maybe it's our time to finally see Bigfoot, which we all laughed at. Then. Crashing from a tree behind where we're standing, we see a figure that's roughly 7 feet tall smashing through the trees, almost knocking them over while it moves, and there was an absolutely disgusting stench to accompany this. Its face almost looks like a wolf face, but it's pretty hard to see because it's so hairy. We all looked at each other in disbelief for a second then glanced back as this thing quickly went off deeper into the forest. Now one of my friends was convinced it was someone in a bear suit playing tricks on us, but the way it knocked the trees over was unbelievable and it stank in this area for literally days afterwards. We did a big investigation but couldn't find anything.
and I worked in fire lookout towers for a couple of years. It's a job that I had thoroughly enjoyed, and I remember one particular event that I'd like to share with everyone. It's scary for different reasons than other stories that you're probably used to hearing on here, but let me explain. This happened during one beautiful summer's day. I'd been up in the tower for a couple of days and I was really enjoying my time. I was reading a couple of books and having a really good time. I actually like to write in my spare time, and I guess just English and writing is my passion in general. So the day started like any other. I'd woke up and made myself a coffee and checked in on the radio station to make sure that I was doing okay and if there was any particular instructions. Also I needed a weather forecast. I ended up talking to my other friend who wasn't too far away on another radio and we just had a good conversation. After our conversation, I finished another coffee. I used the first one to make me wake up and the second one to enjoy it and I used the toilet as you can imagine from drinking so much coffee. I had some breakfast and needed to set out for a while. I had certain things I needed to go and inspect to make sure everything was normal. I count my way down the steps which is something I always do just out of habit. I make it to the bottom of the tower and double check that I've actually closed the door and everything and I can't remember exactly if I locked it or not but I'm not too worried, I haven't seen anyone out here for a while. I then set out on the gravelly path. Now the path itself is actually pretty nice because we have some graveled areas which is a lot better for your feet than walking over the true forest land. There's quite a lot of trees that have been downed and I really have bad times slipping on these because I'm not necessarily too careful. I'm always taking in what's just ahead of me. I continue walking on my gravelly path and I can see the trees ahead of me are roughly 100 feet tall. They're really beautiful. I continue going forward to make my way onto a small bridge. The bridge has been there for a while and it's made out of wood and I know that might scare some people but I think it's actually really cool. What's nice about the bridge is that you can see some fish in the water nearby it with part of a river that's running past where I am. The reason I like to walk this way too is I get to see parts of nature that I can't see up in the towers. Because of course, if you're constantly scanning the horizon, you don't necessarily get a chance to see what's actually going on directly underneath you. So I head over the bridge and everything's fine. I'm actually running a relative inspection on the bridge as something that I have to do, which is one of my duties. I continue walking along the stream now, which is really beautiful and picturesque, and everything's normal. I don't actually have my radio with me at the time though, because I just want to enjoy this part of the day, and to be truthfully honest, I've actually forgotten it. I'm not too worried though, because I've never had a radio call very early in the morning, and I'm pretty confident being out here on my own. I continue on my trek and make notes that nobody's been around here and there's one area that I have to check out because there's been reports of people loitering around but I can't really see anyone. I do find a strange kind of clearing that looks like people have been there recently but there's no signs of life whatsoever. I think most likely it's some kind of animals that people have seen in the night time and mistaken them for people so I just put it down as nothing. Now the whole time that I'm doing this, I'm constantly taking notes of my surroundings, making sure that everything's okay. The thing is, when you're a fire ranger, you have to remember that a fire can start at literally any time, and you're responsible for the safety of everyone in your area and the surrounding areas. It's a job that I took very seriously, so I was always on point with things like this. I continue on my short trek, and the trees actually changed slightly. They're a little bit more skinny now and there's not really much of a path for me to follow and there's lots of large rocks around. Now one good thing I noticed is there's lots of moss type things on the ground which is very important because it means the air's not too dry and hopefully it stops any fires spreading if they would start. 
Now, as I'm walking, I hear a very loud thud sound. It literally sounds like something really big has fell out of a tree. I stop for a moment and think maybe it's a tree that's just fallen, or maybe an animal has fell out of it like a bear or god knows what. I have a look, and for the life of me, I can't seem to locate where the sound comes from. It was either that or some kind of Bigfoot. I laugh and continue onwards thinking it's probably just a fallen tree. I make it up to a hill and I do some more surveying and everything's as it should be. I've now completed this part of my duties and I'm heading back towards the tower. I'm actually pretty happy now. The first part of the morning is actually always my favourite and I like knowing that I'm out here mostly on my own. I've got another two or three days ahead of me up here so I need to make sure I keep my mind occupied. So I decide to do some reading. I speak on the radio once again to my friend and I tell him that I actually heard a strange sound which was like something really heavy falling but I can't figure out exactly where it's from. My friend laughs and says he's actually heard the same before but not to worry about it, it's probably just some trees falling down where their times come. I agree and stop what I'm doing. I hear another sound outside that sounds very similar to what I was just speaking about to my friend. I tell him there's something I need to check out and I'll be back soon. He says roger that. Over. I say over and head out. Now, I wasn't really sure what I heard this time because obviously I was talking to my friend and I wasn't necessarily engaged with what was happening around so much. And I realised that whatever it was must have been coming from near the stream. I think it's quite odd and I'm worried that maybe it's somebody out here that's in trouble. It could also be from a fire where a tree's fallen but I would know if it was a fire and this sounded different. I ended up making my way along the rocks to roughly where I thought that I heard the sound from. I take a moment, pause, take in everything, but yet find nothing. Now just off ahead of me, I'm certain that I can see a person just off the other side of the forest, dressed in virtually all black, just going behind a tree. I think, oh, so that's a bear, so I probably need to get back now. I don't have any bear spray or anything like that with me because I've come out very quickly to investigate. I'm pretty worried because if this is a baby bear then mama bear's going to be pretty angry and god knows how many there are and I'm not really ready to fight them. I think they were probably trying to get some fish in the water or I don't know, so I decide to head back. I'm pretty careful to trace my steps and make sure that nothing's actually following me and I can beeline back to the tower. I ended up making it back and I put a small barrier over the bottom of my tower. Now this is something that we had been told to do just in case of situations like this but to be honest I don't think it's going to make any difference at all really if a bear comes but it's what I was doing. I'd made sure I disposed of all my food correctly too so I knew they probably weren't coming up for food so this meant they were probably angry at me or going into their territory and then make my way back up to the top and I report to my friend and the other station that I think there's bears and just to let the other guys keep a watch out and that if I don't report back in time to assume the worst they say that's completely fine and they don't want me to investigate further thankfully I do keep an eye out however with my binoculars though I'm now back doing my job looking for fires again and it's starting to get a little bit dark now. I think this is good because it means that the bears are probably going to eventually go off and do other things and try and get sleep or whatever they do and I can have some more rest now. It's almost coming up to the part of the ship where I can sleep so I'm pretty happy about this. Basically, another worker is going to take over from a nearby station that can overlook my area and I can get some sleep. So. Forgetting about the events from the day, I go into my bed and I have a really nice sleep. I wake up the next morning and I repeat my routine. I have a coffee where the first one's basically to help me wake up and the other one's something that I can enjoy. 
I still have to repeat the same things as yesterday and make sure nobody's loitering around or camping where they shouldn't be, so I grab my things and my radio this time and step down, counting my steps as I go. I go through the gate and I stop in my hills. That's odd. I was certain I left the barrier up that stops things going up into the station. I look around and make sure nothing else is off and there's no people or animals, but there doesn't seem to be anything. I go and investigate. I look for any claw marks or anything that signals that maybe an animal did this, but strangely I can't see anything. Again, I think this is pretty bizarre because I've not really experienced this before, but I just put it down to myself being tired and probably not thinking much, though I do actually take note of it this time as being something very weird. Now I continue on like normal and actually have to set out a different way than before. This time I don't get to go over that beautiful stream again and it's actually annoying because I have to go to where I'm sure I saw a bear the other day. I'm a lot more cautious now and I have a bear spray with me which is easily within reach. I'm also armed with a weapon but I'd rather not use it and actually save the bear if possible. But of course, if the bear spray doesn't work, then I'm definitely going to use it. So I head out again, and this time, it's a little bit different from yesterday because now, in fact, there are signs of life and people being here recently. There's the remnants of a campfire, which has been put out recently, and some other trash laid around. That explains why the bears were coming. And it's also quite dangerous because this could make a fire, and this is what my job is for protecting against. So, I quickly report it and on the radio, and make a note of it myself. One annoying thing is I now have to keep an eye out in case anybody's messing around, but who would do it that close to a station, I wonder? That's something that freaks me out a little bit. I think it's very bizarre that they don't care that I'm there and they have their own fire going. I think this is odd, but I put it down to being nothing, and I continued looking for further signs of life around, human specifically. I hear somebody talking on the radio now, and I tone in on it. I can hear people talking. They're saying, yeah, he's still moving around, we'll have to go and find him later. It's quite hard to make out exactly what they're saying, but some of the other fire workers or park rangers have obviously found some people messing around here that shouldn't be and are trying to locate them. I think this is good because at least I'm not doing this all on my own now. I ended up switching off to another channel, which is my main one, and I continue on. I don't find any other signs of life now, but every so often, I am certain that I can see a tall silhouette figure in all black just off in the distance, just far enough that I can actually doubt what I'm seeing. I'm pretty sure this is a bear, but the weird thing is it was standing up straight now. So it means it wasn't a bear, but I don't know what else it could have been. I think this is pretty odd, and I just put it down to my mind messing with me a bit because of being out here for a while alone. I've now completed the main thing I need to do for the day and can actually head back again and just relax a little bit. Now when I get back to the tower, I'm sure that something's off. I can't describe exactly what it is, but the atmosphere just feels different. I once again put the gate down and I make sure that I'm 100% certain I've done this correctly so I don't have to second guess and doubt myself like I did before. I have one look around for bears or other animals and I don't see anything and make my way up the stairs. Now when I get to the very top, I can just about make out a light coming from the area that I checked out the other day. Bingo, I think. This is it. A fire. I can go and report it in. I quickly go and grab my binoculars and take a closer look. I can just make out a red amber glow with the binoculars. Just as I go to radio a tin, it goes out, like it didn't start. I begin questioning what I'm actually seeing, and I decide to actually step out from inside of the cabin thing at the top, onto the balcony. 
I have my coffee in hand, and I realize that there's nothing actually there, but it's something I should probably investigate. I radio in what I'm seeing and that I'm going to investigate it, thinking there's a potential cause of fire not far from where I am, and head down. I count my steps again like normal, and thankfully this time, the barrier's still in place that I put there before. I quickly hopped over it to save time, and somewhat excitedly head out with my flashlight. I make it to the exact spot where I thought I could see the red glow, and there's nothing there. I think this is really odd. I have quite a powerful torch, and I'm scanning it around everywhere, but there's no signs of anything. Not even a cigarette on the ground, nothing. I don't smell smoke or anything, so I know that it's probably nothing, but I think it's pretty odd. Maybe it was a firefly or god knows what kind of insect I don't know about, but I'm just relieved that there's not going to be a fire, and I should be able to get a good night's sleep. I then quickly go back up to the tower, jump over the barrier again, and I'll speak on the radio explaining that there's nothing out of the ordinary here. I then head outside and go to grab my coffee again, and I realise something odd. I must have left it indoors and not realised. I look inside and it's nowhere to be found. I head out again to check the whole balcony and there's literally nothing. I think this is extremely weird because I know for a fact I had it there, and you can still feel part of the wooden balcony is warm from where I rested my cup earlier. So again, I think this is really bizarre, but maybe I'm just tired and need some sleep I put it down to. I'm a little bit paranoid now, and I actually try and barricade the door a bit with the end of my bed. I close all of the blinds and radio in that it's my turn to switch off for the night, and someone else is going to take over the search for fire, and I gladly fall asleep. I wake up and I'm excited because it's only two days left and I get to go home relatively soon. Usually being out in the wilderness like that is something that I thoroughly enjoy, but not this time. Something was just off and I couldn't describe exactly what it was. I wake up and have my morning coffee, and I head out to just peer over the balcony and see how everything is and take in the nature. I'm leaning on the balcony and I put my cup down and I have a double take moment. There's another cup of coffee sitting there. It's very cold and has clearly been there overnight and it's half drank. I realised then that this is a cup of coffee that I left there from the other day. Now what's weird is it's in a complete different place from where I would usually leave my coffee. It's very close to the edge and I certainly didn't put it there. I'm very freaked out now and quickly throw it off to the side and take it inside with my new cup. I decided not to tell anybody about this just in case I was getting a bit tired and my mind was playing tricks on me from being lonely. And I report in that most things are normal and I'm going to do my daily duties again. This time I take my coffee and a flask with me and I actually don't feel as safe in the tower as I usually do and I'm quite happy to be getting away from it. I head down like normal and count my steps, and luckily nothing's disturbed my barrier. But this is odd now, because clearly something's been up there moving my cups around, maybe some animal, but there's no signs of anything. I have a look around, and I can't see any claw marks or anything. Maybe it's a really small animal like a raccoon or god knows what up there, but that's really weird. How would it possibly know to move my cup and then put it back? And why would it have not just drank it and quickly gone off again? And why on earth would something want to crawl all the way up there? This was really weird now, but I decided that I should just get on with the day like normal and try and forget about everything that's been happening. I set off on my hike and begin. Now this day I have to head back over the beautiful bridge again, which is something I'm quite happy to do. I make my way onto the middle of it and I stop for a moment to take in the beauty of everything. I actually think about how lucky I am to have a job like this and how many great things I've actually had from working here. I've met a lot of great friends and I've really found a true inner peace from being out in the nature 
And I think I've learned a lot about myself too, which is something I'm very happy about and still proud of to this day. And while I'm standing there on the balcony, I hear a clapping sound, which I think is really odd. I laugh to myself thinking, oh, maybe somebody heard my speech and thinking aloud, when I look up on the horizon and I can see a figure standing there, once again, dressed in all black, completely motionless, just out of sight of where I can clearly make out who they are or what they're doing. I shout out, hey, this time really frustrated, saying, what are you doing here? You know you're not supposed to be here. Who are you? And there's no reply. I explain who I am and say that I'm about to radio this in and the boys are going to come and find you. You're not supposed to be camping here. This is your last warning. Now this figure does not move at all, which starts to make me question whether it's an animal or not. I think god, maybe Bigfoot is real. I've seen a UFO before and I doubted them, so maybe a Sasquatch is about to come and get me. Now I can clearly see this figure raising its hand to its mouth, then slowly sidestepping into the trees. I'm pretty convinced now this isn't a bear or normal animal, but who could possibly be out here and why the hell are they doing this to me? What's worse is that I try and radio this in but I can't get reception for some reason. I know my best bet now is to hike off a little bit up to a hill and this is actually where I need to go. I feel confident enough that I should be able to hold my own if it comes to it in a conflict because I'm relatively big and I've done some martial arts before and I'm armed but this is weird. I don't really have a choice now other than to go to the hill and radio in what I've seen. Now I'd like to say I did this fairly confidently, but I basically half sprinted and jogged all the way up to the hill. I quickly get onto the radio and say what's happened, and would you believe it? The controller tells me that I need to be 100% confident that this is a person and not an animal, and that I have to investigate. I say are you kidding me? And I explain everything that's happened, and he says this is pretty bizarre, and to check in in a couple of hours. I say a couple of hours, I might not have that long. What if there's a group of people out here? He laughs and says, don't be silly. Come on, you've only got a couple more days left, and this is probably just your mind going a bit funny as it's near the end of your shift. I'll tell you what, you can go early tomorrow if you like. I reluctantly declined though, because I don't want to have to call this early and have them thinking I'm crazy and my reputation going. I quickly fill out the notes saying I've done all the checks I need, but I didn't. I didn't really look properly at anything when I was running up this hill. I'm just happy to be up the hill and speaking to another person again. I open my coffee and start drinking it, and it tastes pretty weird because it's been so shaken up by my jogging, but I'm pretty happy I can sit and enjoy this for a moment, and to be honest I pretty much forgot about what happened. I start to calm myself down and say, you know what, maybe the controller was right. Maybe this is just my mind playing tricks on me and there's nothing for me to worry about and it's all in my head. I now take it one step at a time and somehow convince myself into continuing the rest of my checks. Now I actually finish my searches without finding anything out of the ordinary. Call it Dutch courage or I don't know what because I didn't drink any alcohol but the coffee seemed to give me some energy to investigate a little. I ended up going right to where I saw this figure standing and stopping for a moment to be still, to take in the surroundings. I can't see anything. Now what I think is bizarre too is that I was a long way from that bridge and I don't know how anything could have actually heard me up there. I could barely hear anything other than the running water now and I think this is really bizarre. I take a moment to look around and my ears start ringing. I learnt later that this is out of fear and stress but at the time I didn't know why it was happening. I can't stop the ringing from happening and I realise that I probably need to get back into the station. What's more annoying is I still have more to do this day. Just as I start heading up the stairs, I take a moment to look behind me and I'm sure for a second I can see another figure. 
I look to my left and right, but when I look again, it's gone. I tell myself, calm down, everything's okay, you're gonna be fine. I still need to get into the tower and actually tell them that I'm okay and that I've investigated. To be honest, I only really investigated subconsciously. I don't really think it was a conscious decision, but I quickly hop onto the radio and explain everything. The controller says, see, everything's fine. Don't worry, we'll get the night watch to keep an eye on it for you. I say, oh yeah, thanks, great, that makes me feel better. He says, just relax. If you're 100% sure and can positively identify that there's some people out here that shouldn't be, we'll send in the cavalry. And with that, I know all I can do now is say Roger and over, and he says the same, and to keep careful out there. Now, I decided to arm myself with both the bear spray and my weapon at the same time, which is something I didn't usually do because I wanted to have every situation planned for in case anything else happened to me. Now, I actually ended up reading for a little while just to try and take my mind off of things. I felt extremely tired and was trying to keep myself awake. I decided to make another coffee and go out onto the balcony. It wasn't too far from sunset and I actually had a little bit of time left before I needed to go to sleep and call into the other tower to let them know that it was their turn to take over and that I was going to get some shut eye. Now I actually decided to call in a bit earlier this time and explain everything that had happened to the other worker who was going to be watching over me. I wanted him to know what the dangers were and that if anything were to happen to me then he knew roughly what had happened. Thankfully he completely understood and said that was crazy and that some of the other guys had actually seen similar things before but equally had it brushed off in the same area that I worked in, apparently as recently as a couple of months ago. I said great, why did nobody tell me that before? And he said we didn't really want to worry anybody out here, but we wanted to get live feedback too to know whether this was actually accurate or not. He recommended that I slept with the barrier down and that I also barricaded myself in and had my weapon ready next to my pillow and this was exactly what I was going to do. I thanked him for the positive encouragement and actually believing me about what I was saying and he actually said without saying it directly that they had some problems with the controller not necessarily believing what they were saying to them and that the moment there was anything weird to give him a call and he'd be right over. I actually felt fairly nice now hearing this and I was actually able to fall off to sleep relatively easily. Now at one point I did wake up in the night and heard a banging sound but I'm not sure whether this was just me because I accidentally knocked my torch off my bed at around the same time so I ended up falling asleep again. This time when I fell asleep I actually felt pretty good and I felt very happy waking up knowing that this was going to be my last day out here and I didn't really have too much to worry about. I call in quickly to the tower and let them know that everything's okay and I then thank my friend for doing his part and making sure I was okay. He says Roger that, I'll speak to you in a couple of hours, over. I repeat affirmative over and start my day. Now this time everything seems normal and I'm actually a lot more happy than I was the last few days. I think the simple fact of speaking to somebody who actually believed in me made all the difference and I actually felt a lot more confident now. I ended up heading out to the exact same area that I thought I saw something the other day because I had to pass this way to get to the area that I needed to inspect and I didn't really think anything of it and nothing seems out of the ordinary. I even passed by the original campsite that I had saw and I realised that nothing had been there since the time I last inspected it. The fire had gone long ago and it made me feel a lot more confident. During my lunch break I decide that I want to go back to the same bridge to just sit in the middle and relax. Now the biggest thing I was scared of now was maybe the bridge giving way but I knew that was extremely unlikely. I ate my food there and just relaxed. I ended up laying on the floor, just with my hat down, looking towards some of the clouds. 
I can only do this every so often because it actually hurts my eyes, but tinting the hat down was really a beautiful thing. I start thinking about how lucky I am to be out here with the nature and animals, and that the animals seem to accept me here, and it's almost like they can sense that I'm not necessarily dangerous for them. I could be wrong, but I think some animals can actually sense whether people are nice or not, and this what's a smile on my face. While I'm laying here, I actually consider about making a novel maybe, and writing a bit about my stories, but I decide that's for another day, and that I have a long career ahead of me. I get up and everything's normal, and I make my way back down the gravel path. I like the sound of the gravel under my shoes, and I like all of the birds and whatnot in the trees. I make my way back towards the base of the tower, and everything's as it should be. I start to think maybe the controller was right and there was nothing for me to be worried about, and I head up, but I'm still not completely out of the clear, I still have to survive another night here, so I put the barrier down once again and make my way back up the tower, counting my steps like usual. I think this is just a habit I picked up that makes me feel better and more reassured in my situation and that I haven't got to worry about anything. I get back to the top and I radio in that my shift's come to an end and I'm going to call it in for the night and in the morning I'll be returning back home. The controller says well done buddy, I told you there's nothing to worry about and I thank him and sign off. I then call into the next tower over and say everything's fine as he's about to watch my area for me. I take one last look with my binoculars for extra measure to make sure there's no signs of fire and I now head in to my bed, once again fortifying myself here. Now I didn't want to fall asleep too quickly so I leave my torch on above me so I can read. I'm reading a really nice novel that I picked up a couple of weeks ago and I actually destroyed a few pages in my bag and I was kind of making up in my head what the rest of the story should be. I didn't bother taping it up, I decided it was better that way. It's sort of become a part of me in a sense, if that makes sense. I have a good time and before you know it, I was sound off asleep. I seem to fall into a very deep sleep this time because I don't actually remember dreaming or much of anything. I do remember waking up to a glow outside. I feel pretty happy because it means that my shift is over and that I'm about to head off home. I pull my socks on and start boiling the kettle. Then I take a moment to look outside. I realise it must be the very start of sunrise because I can't see much else illuminated. I start making my coffee and I realise something's off. I can't exactly put my finger on it but maybe just maybe there's something not right here. I glance down at my clock quickly to get my bearings and it says 3am. Something's definitely wrong now. Why am I seeing any light at this time? Oh no. It must be a fire, I've realised quickly, and I suddenly feel with adrenaline. I quickly call into the tower that there's a fire very close to me, and they ask for the bearings, but I don't have them yet. I say I'm about to find out and to stay on the line. I quickly grab the binoculars, and I look to where the glow is, and I can see the start of a large fire. It's very close to the tower, so now I have to get out of here. I now scream over the necessary information about where the fire is and I go quickly to take another look. I look to the base of the fire and I'm trying to figure out exactly why this has started. I look to the left and realise that there's a large rock obstructing the view and a few other skinnier ones. I think this is odd because I haven't seen them before. I take a moment to let my eyes adjust and I realise there's four figures standing there in the fire. I let out a scream, and to my horror, just through the fire, I can make out one of them waving to me. I realise instantly that I need to get out of here as soon as possible. I quickly grab my radio and run downstairs. I get down as quick as I possibly can and jump over the barrier. Annoyingly, I left most of my belongings at the time, but I didn't care now. What's worse is I don't have a torch. I realised, God, I didn't call in on the radio I was about to abandon post, but at the time, I truly didn't care. Luckily, I still had my small radio with me, so I quickly scream over to my friend what's happening at the other tower. 
he says he's going to let everyone know and just to make it over to him. Which is great because that means at least a 2 kilometre hike. The worst thing is I don't have my torch so I can't figure out exactly where I need to go. I look towards where the fire is after about a minute of running and just as I approach the bridge I've realised I can't see any figures now but the fire is spreading pretty quick. I decide that I'm going to stay close to the water because as a last resort this can probably save me and it should eventually be able to get me over to my friend. Now when I'm sprinting, I hear a clap sound again. At first I didn't turn around because I thought maybe it was the sound of branches snapping from the fire. I continue jogging for another 30 seconds when I met with more clapping, just more distant. This time I'm almost frozen in horror and force myself to turn around and I can see four figures standing on the bridge clapping me. I let out a scream and start sprinting again. I quickly hold on to the radio and scream what's happening but I'm not met with anything other than silence. I try again and realise god, I'm not at the area where I can get signal, I have to try and get over the hill at least. My feet actually feel like they're burning because they're not designed to go over train like this this fast but I keep going. Luckily, I'm relatively fit and I can keep up quite a decent pace. I run for a number of minutes and stop again to try and see if anyone's following me. I stop for a good couple of minutes until I can see a torch, just off the path where I'd been not too long ago. I'm pretty certain I'm being followed now, and I have basically tumbled down the hill. I didn't mean to and I ended up really hurting my legs doing so but I basically slipped down the whole thing. I busted up my arm pretty bad too in the process. As I come to a stop at the bottom of the hill, I can no longer see the fire because it's out of the line of view. This is good for two reasons. One, it calms me down a bit, and two, it means my friend isn't that far away and help. I go to call in on the radio, but I realize that I've lost it in the tumble. I say, God, I can't believe you've lost this to myself as I force myself back to my feet. What's worse though is I've had to adopt a kind of slow hikey pace to try and make it out to where my friend is because of my injuries. What's worse is where I have to jog now, I'm not really going to be able to see much further ahead until I'm basically at the base of his tower, which isn't really great because I could be going in the wrong direction now. And that's just what happened. For the first two minutes, I'm certainly going in the wrong direction. I stop for a moment to catch my breath and hide underneath a tree. Just as I do so and I'm able to calm my thoughts and slow my breathing down, I'm met by a running water sound. I do a small prayer and thank God for leading me in the right direction. I now head very close to the stream and I know this is going to lead me to my friend. I ended up wading through the water a little bit by accident because it's quite dark out now. I can feel blood on my arm and I'm a little bit worried about it getting infected but that's a later issue. I decide I'm okay to walk a little bit now and I continue onwards. I need to walk just to gather my breath and not make my injuries worse when I see more lights ahead of me. Oh no, they must have followed me when I slowed down and saw where I headed, I think, and I quickly ducked down in the water. I'm just off on the side of a bank and trying to hide myself amongst rocks. I don't know what to do at this point. If these people are ahead of me, I have no option but to hide. I decide the best thing to do is to get a visual and I quickly peer over the bank. I see the lights again to my horror, but... Then after a moment I realise they're blue flashy lights. These are police, and there seems to be a few of them. I feel a wave of relief wash over my body, one that I've never felt before, as I've re-emerged from the embankment. I head up the hill, and I go to shout out for help but I stop myself, realising I'm not entirely out of the danger yet. I continue walking along the edge of the bank and... I eventually make it over to the path that leads to the tower. I have to be careful now because I don't want to make them jump and they attack me by accident. So I instead decide that I should call out the name of the other worker that's my friend. He then screams back to me, Mark, 
Mark, I knew you were there, Mark. I said, quick, go help him. Where are you, Mark? And quickly, two police officers rush over to me. I ended up collapsing to the floor and slowly telling them what has happened. This is at the same time they're starting to patch me up for my injuries. I say there's a group of people out there that have just set fire to next to the tower that were trying to hunt me down. They ended up calling it in to get more support and some other rangers to come and help out with the search. My buddy gave me a big cup of coffee and quickly put a blanket over me, helping me get into the car where I was driven off to get help for my injuries. The police were happy with the information I'd given them and they decided not to bother me too much because clearly I was in a state of shock. In the drive over there, I remember just putting my head on the window and slowly drifting asleep. It turned out that I had sprained my arm and twisted my ankle and I had a large cut but luckily the police had done a really good job of helping patch that up and I didn't end up needing to go to the hospital. I was taken home where I was able to recover and the police took some more details from me. I thanked them for the help and they left. A couple of hours later, Mark came to join me. He gave me a big hug and said sorry for everything that happened to me. I explained everything and he said I did the right thing and not to worry that I could have however much time off I needed from work. He then explained that the police did a large search, and so did some of the rangers. He didn't end up helping out with it because he still had to cover his area, but he was very worried about me. He told me that the police didn't find anything initially, but they were going to continue searching and that they'd update me after what had happened, and that they were definitely going to press for criminal charges as soon as they captured him. He then said he really hoped he could get his hands on them first. Now the following weeks and months after that was a blur, now the following few months and weeks after that were actually a blur, I still struggle to remember much of it even to this day. I ended up leaving that job and working a similar one in a different area. I'd never had anything like it happen to me since and as you can imagine it still traumatises me a bit to this day. I made contact with Mark a few times since and we're actually really good friends still. He actually quit his job there too the following day, and he does something completely different now working in a wood shop. The annoying part about this is I never actually found out what came with the investigation, or whether these people were actually found or not. I just hate the not knowing part. I tried to make contact with the police, but they wouldn't give me much information about it, but I think it's important for people's safety. I still don't really know what to think of the whole situation. One thing I do know however is that it's extremely important for you to trust your guts and your instincts. You can easily play things off as being tired and oh maybe you've just been out on your own for too long, but don't. Some of this is a survival instinct that was adopted and adapted years before we existed by our ancestors and they were there for a reason. I don't know what would have happened too if I hadn't have actually woke up in time. Most likely the base of the tower would have set fire and it would have either collapsed or trapped me in there and I wouldn't be telling you this story today. What's worse is I'll never know exactly why these people were stalking me and tried to get me like that. I haven't really done anything wrong to anyone and that kind of haunts me a bit that there's truly evil like this in this world. But I can tell you one thing, I'm never going to sleep as easy as I used to, and I'm never going to go back to that part of the country again. I just can't. Just the thought of it kills me. I've not been able to go camping since or many of the other things that I enjoy. Even if I'm with a good group of people, I still feel terrified. I really hate thinking of what would have happened if I hadn't have woken up then, but... I guess I can tell you that it's not worth thinking about, and that might be a story for another day, but thankfully it's not one that I have to share with anyone. So please, whoever's listening to this story, remember trust your instincts, and never doubt that something bad could be out there. Always be well prepared for any situation and never rule out anything. I hope nobody ever has to experience anything like this. 
and I thank God that this didn't happen to someone who wasn't as experienced as I was. I think if I didn't have all my training and level of fitness, I again would have made it out of there alive. Thank you for listening to my story, it helps me get this off my chest.